Hello again and welcome back. Today I want to cover Azure Site Recovery. So I'm going to have a couple videos set up breaking out the big tasks like setting up Site Recovery and then actually defining a virtual machine to protect. And then I'll come back and talk about test failovers and failovers and show you those behaviors. So the first thing we need to do is move into the recovery services and create a new vault. A vault gives us a, the ability to define where we're going to store these backups or site recoveries. So under recovery services I have my choice of backup vault or site recovery vault. Site recovery vault is what we're going to leverage here and quick create is our only choice. So I'll go ahead and name this and then pick a region. Regions are important. So where do I want this vault to be? Because I'm setting this up as part of the whole Microsoft TS2 configuration that I'm building, I'm going to put this in the East US. And in the subsequent video, it's going to become clear why I did that. But this list of recovery vaults gives me the vaults available for Azure Site Recovery. As you'll notice, not every region is in this list yet. So I have my choice of East US or West US for the United States. I'm going to choose East US, and because these recovery vaults are actually geographically redundant, Microsoft in the back end is going to keep copies of your data in the East US data center and then replicate it to a second geographically redundant data center within the US. So I'll go ahead and say create vault here and it'll take a few minutes to create. I'm going to pause the video of course and I'll come back to you once it's created and we'll go into the next steps. Our site recovery vault has been created now so now we're going to go through the process of setting up this recovery vault. We have a number of different choices around recovery vaults. These are the different scenarios we currently support. This list continues to grow. Our scenario is the one we're choosing here. Hyper-V site to Azure. So the first thing I have to do is just follow this step-by-step -step process. Create a Hyper-V site. So we're going to name our site and go ahead and create that. And now that site's been created. So now that the site's created, we can move back here to our landing page. And I'm going to first choose Download the Provider. This is going to be an agent that I have to install on my Hyper-V host. So I'm going to save that to my desktop and let that download. While that's downloading, I'm also going to download the registration key. The registration key is our certificate and authentication mechanism to the vault. This is what secures your communication, encrypts it, secures it, so that you can have an easy connection. It removes a lot of the complexity of setting this up and authenticating this. So I'm going to save this to my desktop as well. Keep in mind these vault credentials are something that should be treated like any other certificate. Anybody that has these credentials has the ability to authenticate to your vault. Step three that we need to create a storage account. So we're going to create a specific storage account for the storage of our test. So where are we going to put these replicas? So I'll name it TS2 ASR Storage. I can put this within my affinity group or I can put this in the East US. I'm just going to go ahead and put it in the East US and my replication is geo redundant for this. So I'll go ahead and create that storage account. While that's working, I'll move back down to my recovery services and go back to my step-by-step -step process. Now I need to create an Azure Virtual Network. There are actually two Azure Virtual Networks we'll use for this. This one will be the TS2 Test Failover Network. And I'm putting all of this in the East US because the other network I'm going to use is actually my existing site-to-site -site VPN. So I'll move through this wizard. My DNS servers right now I'm going to leave this blank. I'm going to leave these blank because this is my test network. My IP scheme here I'm going to use 120 because I used 220 earlier. That was my breadcrumb. So 120 for my test scenario and then drop this to a slash 16. I'm going to leave just a single subnet and have it go ahead and create that virtual network. So while that's working I can move back to my recovery services and check the list to see what next. I've created the storage account and virtual network, but before I can proceed, I have to install this provider. So I'm going to minimize this. This is where I need to install the agent on my local Hyper-V host, and it's a real simple process to go through. First thing it does is asks if we want to leave Microsoft Update enabled. Unless you have a serious reason to disable this, please leave it on because we'll update the agent like any other update. Then it asks for the location, right? And we'll go ahead and install the agent. And now the agent's installed. So now we just need to configure it. The first thing it does is check to see if the server is currently connected to the internet. If the server isn't connected to the internet, you could still set this up, but 
again we can't verify anything until it's connected. So I'm going to con connect with my existing settings since it sees the outside world and this is where I now use this recovery key and again it contains the subscription, the keys, all of that that we need for authentication. So it sees that it's made the connection and now we're establishing that connection between the on-premises agent and the Azure Recovery Vault. Now that that's complete we can move back to the portal and create our protection group. We move over here to create protection group and it asks to specify the settings. What I'm going to do is name it TS2 settings and it asks for the source. So which site am I talking about? The target? Which subscription is this going to? And then the storage account. So I created a separate storage account here for these ASRs to move into. This is where I set my Hyper-V replication settings that we're accustomed to seeing, right? So how often am I going to copy this? What I found is the more frequent copies have a higher level of success because your deltas are smaller. For this example, I'm just going to stick with this quick one. How many recovery points? Let me keep four recovery points. And how often do I want a VSS snapshot? The same things we can ask for within a Hyper-V replica, we have the ability to manage here. And then my initial replication start time. Just like Hyper-V Replica, but now this one's probably more important, I can choose when to start this replication. So I could start it in the middle of the night when I have more available bandwidth if I need to. I'm going to choose to start replication immediately, and now it's going to create this replication group. Now the protection group has been created. We can move into this and look at this. The great thing about this is I could add virtual machines here, or what I really like here is I can make changes to the configuration. So I chose a copy frequency of 30 seconds. All of these are now adjustable and it gives me this customization I need. But at this point, let's step back. We've set up the protection group, so I've talked about the things we need to do there. And in my next video, I'll actually talk through how to put a virtual machine in this protection group and get it set up. So again, thank you for your time and I wish you well.